back. Yeah, to look back. To look back. Review. All right. Brother Roger, mm -hmm. what are the two uh, modes that uh, show uh, volatile qualities? Juicy and cohortive. Juicy and cohortive. A plus. All right. All right. How many verb stems are there in Hebrew? You remember what? And can you name them? How many verb stems are there in Hebrew? Sharon. I want to say seven. That's right. Seven, the number of perfection. Just remember, the number of perfection, seven. All right. There are seven verb stems in, the, uh, in Hebrew. Now, what are they? Let's go start out with cow stem. Cow. cow stem. What does that mean? Shows action forward. Simple action. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Simple action, cow stem. All right, how about niffle? That's simple passive. Simple passive. You have to remember the verb stems in Hebrew are not the same as they are in Greek. They show kinds of actions like that, but the verb stems in, in Hebrew are more like voice and modes in Greek. Okay? Number three, what is the intensive mode or, or, t or, or verb stem in Hebrew? The intens intensive one. Uh, Pam. All right. Uh, with great force, like yes. Like yeah, that's it. Abel, like. What? Abel with the yes. Uh huh. Violence. Brother Mike, which one is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's her fault? <laughs> Brother uh, Roger. PL stem. PL stem. All right, that's, that's to brutally kill. All right? Katal. Katal. You know, brutally kill. All right, now the intensive passive of that is PL. Not PL, but PL. All right. He was brutally and violently killed. Get told. All right. Now, intensive reflexive. Hithfael. 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 He killed himself. All right. Number six. Causative active. Hithfael. 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 He calls to kill. Now, the causative passive. He was caused to kill is the whole field. The whole field stem. The whole field stem. All right. <clears throat> so we got some of that. Let's go back and rethink some things. Let's go back to the book of Genesis real quick. If you got any, any of you got your, your Bible back there, I'm going to call upon you to mem remember. Okay? To remember. Genesis 1 and 1. Let's look at it. You are falling apart here. Genesis 1 and 1, and let's apply some of this as we look at the book of Genesis. Real quick. These are very common verses. We've looked at them a thousand times. Okay? Repeat after me. Barashith. Bara. 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 Elohim. Bara. Et. Hashim, Hashimayim. Hashimayim. We et. Haaretz. I've written this thing up so much, couldn't hardly read the Hebrew. <coughs> Barashit. Tell me about it. Beginnings. Okay, why? why? Well, why? what is the root word of it to begin with? Barashit. What's the root? What? Bar. No. Barashit. What's the root? What's the root of Barashit? Barashith. What is the root of Barashith? Rosh. 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 See there? We've been not looking at this enough lately, have we? All right. Rosh. What does Rosh mean? Head. All right. Now, what is the word in Hebrew for eternity or a long period of time? Olam. Okay. Can Barashith be used in that same sense? Yes. Which means eternities. Way back in the eternities. All right, now, what part of Barashith tells us it's in the preposition in the locative case? 
in the locative case? What part of Bodersheath tells us in the locative case? Remember what the root is. The root is what? Rosh. So what part of it is in the locative case? The bait in the front of it, which is a preposition which means in. In beginnings or in eternities. Eternities. In eternities, way back yonder. All right, in eternities past. Okay, now bara. Bara is third person masculine singular cal perfect. <clears throat> third person masculine singular cal perfect. Third person masculine the singular. Now I want you to tell me how we conjugate that into a translation. Let's go. It's bara. Okay, bara is the root. Okay, uh, page 135. It means to what? What does bara mean? Bereth. Bereth. Bereth means what? Covenant. Which covenant means what? A cutting. A cutting. A cutting, a dividing, a cutting. So now here we have something that comes from the word to cut, to carve, to polish, to finish. All right. Third person, masculine, singular. Who did it? Who's, that's who? God. God. Okay, God. All right. But what person is he? Third person, masculine, singular. He's singular. There's only one God. Hero is here. The Lord our God is Ahad, one. Okay. Now, third person singular. What is that? Masculine. Third person masculine is singular. He. Thank you. That's what I was going for. He. He did it. So now we know what gender God is also, don't we? We know that because we have got third person masculine singular. All right. Now we have perfect tense. So what does the perfect tense tell us? Completed. It's completed action. So now, so now please create. Now please Translate for me bara. Please trans Pam. Translate for me bara. Third person masculine singular cal perfect. All right. How do we do that? He, he had created. And what else about it? It it was a finished creation, wasn't it? It wasn't in the beginning. It hadn't started, but it was what? It was a finished creation. All right. Now let's go to the word Elohim. Elohim. What's the root of Elohim? El. El. And Elohim means what? It's God in the plural, which means Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We got the triune God. Triune. I like triune a lot better than I do Trinity. Triune means he's three in one. Because we don't have three gods. We have one God. Okay? All right. Now here we have the creator God. Every nation has a Elohim. Almost every person has an Elohim except for atheists and agnostics. They have one, but they just don't know it. Okay? Simple as that. Do you, do you agree with that, Marilyn? Hmm? Yes or no? No? <laughs> All right. Elohim, the creator God. Now we go to a little word, et. 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 What does et mean? The first and well, in 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 Greek, it's the yeah. same thing as ace. Yeah. Extension or limitation of thought or verbal action in Greek, the Greek preposition ace. It's like that. The equivalent is that. Right here, we have a sign of the direct object. It's going someplace, or it's been someplace, or whatever. Extension or limitation of thought or verbal action. Same kind of idea, grammatical idea, as it is in Greek as ace. <clears throat> right here, we've got a sign of direct object. How do you translate it? How do you translate this? How do you translate et? It really doesn't have a no, you don't have a translation. You don't have equivalent. What do you have? You have an idea. You have an idea of force and action. That's what you have. An idea of force and action. Extension or limitation of thought or verbal action. Remember, that's the sign of the direct object in Greek and is actually the grammatical rule or the grammatical idea of the same thing, eth, in Hebrew. All right. Hashemayim. Hashemayim. All right. Now let's look at this. Let's look at this. Hashemayim. What's the root of Hashemayim? Huh? Mayim. That's right. Which is what? Water. Waters. How about ha? The. That's a definite article. Okay. The. 
page 206, by the way, okay? Hashemayim. The root of this, Shamayim, Hashemayim, is on page 1030. And then we have we et. Now let's look at we et. We et. We et. What about we et, brother? So the we is. Um, That's a compound word, isn't it? Yeah. Compound word. Is and. We is and. Mm-hmm. All right. We is and. On page. Uh, <laughs> All right. We don't have that one, huh? All right. About page 253. Uh, and then we have the word et. That's on page 100, or 84, that is. We et, we have a compound word here. Half of it we can translate and, and that's all we do. But we got the idea of the force in action. He created the heavens. Now, he created the word heavens there also. How can that be translated also? Oceans in the sky. Well, it means the waters. It means uplifted waters. That's what it literally means. But how can we translate this word Hashemayim here in Hebrew in, in the Genesis, the first chapter? Remember how you can translate it. John three sixteen, for God so loved the cosmos, the cosmos, the whole created order. He created and finished the heavens, and then he took like a a little pea. A little tassel, we et haaretz, and then he took the earth and placed it in exactly the right spot, with ex- exactly the right gravitational pull, in exactly the right solar system. Isn't that beautiful? All right. Ha aaretz, ha aaretz, ha aaretz. Tell me about ha aaretz. Ha, definite article. Eretz. Dry land, all that dry land or the land mass, okay? Let's go to verse number two now. <clears throat> verse number two in Genesis. You're having an open book test tonight. I want to see what you know, because see, I'm giving you a grade now. See? Now, if you were in my classes in the seminary 40 years ago, this is what would have happened to every class, because I wanted to know what everybody knows at the beginning of the class, what you know and what you do not know, okay? Because I will grill what you do not know back into you. Until you get it right. <laughs> All right. We haaretz. We haaretz. Ha hayata. Hayata. Okay. Say hayata. Tohu. Wawohu. All right. We choshek. El pene tahom. We ruach. Elohim, Mere Chafeth, Al Panei Hamayim. Now let's go back. Are you are you looking at you have a Hebrew Bible? Oh, anybody got a Hebrew Bible? No. We Haaretz. Tell me about We Haaretz. This is a triple compound word, isn't it? Tell me how it's a triple compound word. So you got the preposition. We, we have got a conjunction and. I mean conjunction. and. We have got a whole heuristicone R throw in here, too, don't we? Now that's Greek. Okay, what is a whole heuristicone R throw? Um, uh, the definite article. definite article. Okay, the definite article. All right, we got a definite article. We have a conjunction, we have a definite article, and then we have the, the, the noun root, which is eritz which means, and the earth. All right. Hayata. Say hayata. Hayata. Okay. It's actually a hayata. Okay. Third person singular feminine. Cal perfect. Okay. It comes from haya. Page 214, 224. Comes from this word right here. That's where it comes from. Okay, that's the root of it. That is to become. To become. Okay. What would it be in Greek? The root is. Get a mic. Okay. 
which means to become. Okay? Let's look at this. We are it's Hayata. Now, third person, singular, and fa singular, feminine. Tell me about it. Third person, what? Third person is what? S singular, feminine. She. she. All right. Now we have the word uh, third person, singular, feminine, cal perfect. What is cal perfect? Perfect tense. So it's already what? She had become. The earth she had become. She wasn't this way. Now she had become. That's what the Bible, the Hebrew Bible says here. The earth she had become. You can't get anything else out of that but that. All right? Look on page 224 or 243. 224 in Brown Driver Bridge. Look on page 243 in Kohler and Baumgartner, and it's going to tell you that. You can look in Brown, or you can look in uh, Gesenius. Uh, you can look in any of them. It's going to tell you the same thing. It's, it means to become. And here she had become. Tohu. Tohu. Page 1062, Brown Driver and Briggs. <clears throat> she had become Tohu. She had become confusion. She had become desolation. Okay? Confusion and desolation. And then Wavuhu. 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 Let's look at that word now. Wavuhu. What, what's there? Wavuhu. We've got a conjunction on front of it. And then we got vohu. And that means useless and waste. Waste. Useless waste. The earth had become uh, empty, confused, void, and a useless waste. The earth had become that. It wasn't that way before, but now it had become that. Okay? We choshek. We choshek. Can you say that? We choshek. We choshek. Now, the equivalent of that in Greek is what? Skotia. Skotia. Skotia tophon, actually. Thick darkness. That's what this is. Thick darkness. We choshek. Something more than the absence of all light. Sophon skotia. Something that is like. Uh, a, a, a black hole that absorbs light and emits nothing. The earth had become a battleground of wickedness where no light could escape. All right? We choshek, say it. We choshek. And then we have Al, which is what? Al? Al. Al. Ayin and Lamet. Al. That's a preposition. And it means the equivalent of that in Greek would be epi. Page 153 and 54 in Greek. Okay. This Al here now, this is um, upon. Upon. Upon pene. Pene means what? Face. Face. <laughs> All right. The face. Upon the face. <clears throat> All right. Upon the face. Uh, to home. To home. To home. That means the abyss, the roaring, muddy waters, the deep. Marilyn, <clears throat> when we were out there in the ocean a time or two, it was like rushing, r roaring waters, wasn't it? Yeah. We got into some of that sometimes. Yeah. One time we went out there and, and we pulled off out there and she was squirting tears like you cannot believe. This isn't, we had just begun to go out in the ocean deep, far away. She wouldn't go out for two years. We were set in the bay, and she wouldn't go out. But there's no fish in the bay. And I kept trying to get her out there in the waters. And finally I got her out there in the water, started catching fish, and everything was okay, wasn't it? Yeah. We got out there one time. I'll never forget this time. I mean, the storms just, the waters were just roaring. And I got out there, and we were going to drop the lines in in this one spot because I saw fish on the on the deal. But the waters, oh, the boat was just a flip a flopping and everything else. I told her, stay in that seat, didn't I? Yeah. Don't you get out of that seat. 
And she was just bawling and crying. And I said, sweetheart, do you want to go back in? She said, no, I let's fish. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget. That was the sweetest little thing. She wanted to fish. The Tahome, the deep, the roaring mass of roaring muddy waters. And then we have Wirua. This is a very beautiful thing. Wirua. Wirua. What do we have in this word? Well, ruah is the root, and that's breath. Breath or wind yeah. or spirit. What about we? And. And. And spirit. It doesn't say and the spirit, does it? No, it says and spirit. Elohim, spirit God. Who is this spirit God? We call this person the Holy Spirit. Okay, this is the Holy Spirit. You get in... We're, are we reviewing? Is this fun to you? Reviewing this? Because you're telling me all about this. I want you to translate this verb, this verse, okay? <clears throat> Genesis, first chapter, one of the most important chapters in the Bible, remember. This is where we have creation. Things didn't evolve, they were created. God created, and it became a total mess, somehow. And then God put it back together, okay? Spirit God and Spirit Elohim, this is Creator. Spirit of the Creator God. Mary Chafeth. Mary Chafeth. Mary Chafeth. Let's look at that. Say it, Mary Chafeth. Mary Chafeth. This means uh, it is a, it's PL stem. It's a feminine participle in PL stem. Feminine participle in PL stem. What does PL mean to us? What's PL? Intense. Intensely. So does it start with a mem? Yeah, it starts with a mem. So that stands for from. Uh huh. From. Uh huh. Mere chefeth. Mere chefeth. This on page on page nine thirty four. This word is it. This is in Brown Driver Briggs. This word. On Davidson's, it's page 661. This word has the idea of uh, fertilizing. It has the idea of suffering. It has the idea of cherishing. Okay? It has the idea of mourning. Mourning. Suffering. Great passion. Great feeling, intense feeling. Intense feeling, okay? So in great sorrow and remorse and mourning and yet loving and cherishing and Spirit Elohim doing all this. Spirit of Elohim was mourning over, suffering over, cherishing over, suckling, fertilizing, all of this in the same idea, okay? L, L, page 752, that preposition now. What's the equivalent of Al in, in Greek? Al in Greek. Come on. Page 153, in, Epi, upon, Epi. Here we have Al, like this. And then we have Epi, like this. This is basically the same, with, both of these are preposition. One's a Gr Hebrew preposition, one's a Greek preposition. They have the same idea, upon, to or for or upon. Kind of like it's a locative, instrumental, or dative, isn't it? Locative is not in locative. With, by, or for, kind of, sort of, instrumental, and dative, two or four, absolutely. So this would be in the dative case, wouldn't it? Okay. <clears throat> Rooting intensely upon the faces. Upon the faces. Again, again we have the alpine, the faces, the surface, okay. Of the Haimaim, Hamaim, 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 upon the face of the waters. Okay. Do, do you want to go on a little further? Do you like this? I love it. Uh, is this good? This is very good. Now, I want you to understand something. If we go to uh, Genesis 19 and verse 20, we're going to see the exact equivalent of this again. 
Now the earth she became formless and formless and voice. Now let's go to Genesis 19 and 20. Genesis the 19th chapter and verse 20. And let's look at this. Genesis 19 and 20. I know I've got it in my Bible. I think I did have it in my Bible. 19 and verse 20. Hene nah ha ha eder ha zeth. All right, and behold now, city ha er, city ha zeth, that means the this. Kara uh, karavo is near to flee thither or to there. Shimmo, shimmo. And being a small thing, let me escape, I beg you, there. The knot, the knot, a small thing, it, that it may live my soul. And he said unto him, Behold, I have lifted up your face also for a thing this. To not my destroying the city which you have spoken. Let's see if this is the one that I want. 1920. Let me go over here. Sometimes the, the verses change from translation to translation. Verse 20. Escape and do not look back. All right. So the men seized his hand and the hand of his of his wife in verse 16, 19 and verse 16, and hands for the daughters. And it came about when they brought them out that one said, Escape for your life, do not look back, and you will escape. And Lot said to them, Oh, my lords. Okay, now, where did Lot's wife become a pillar? She became a pillar of salt. Um, 26. 26. Okay, 26. All right, that's the one. I, had, I can't even read my own writing. All right, 26. 1926. Yeah, that's a 26, all right. That's what I thought. <clears throat> I couldn't read my own writing. And 26. Now let me go here and find that one in the Hebrew. That'll be better. All right. Same word over here. And he overthrew the cities. Ha'ele. These. We at and all of the circle around them, and looked away his wife from behind him. We tohu, and she became a pillar of salt. There you go, and she became a pillar of salt. The same word. She became a pillar of salt. She became a pillar of salt. Now let's go on to the verse number three now in Genesis. 
<coughs> we're doing uh, Exodus, but we're going back to review because I want you to understand some things. There's, a, there's a, some beautiful stuff here that I want you to see. And you can't understand it until you know a little bit of Hebrew. I had one of my students call me on the phone here a while back, and he said, you know, Brother Jim, he said, I didn't know that you knew so much Hebrew. And I said, well, how in the world am I going to teach Hebrew to anybody unless I have somebody to I teach them up to the point where I can really teach them some good, deep stuff? Because they don't know what I'm talking about. You have to raise the Hebrew class. You have to get them to the point where you can teach them something, see? So now I'm able to teach you. When I went to the book of Genesis before, I couldn't teach you as deep as I'm teaching you right now. It's a whole different story now. <coughs> Wyomer. This is one of three. Elohim. Yehi. Or. Vahi. Wahi, that is. Or. <coughs> Wahi, or. And he said, third person, masculine, singular, wow, consecutive, and perfect. Tell me about it. And he said, and he kept on saying, where's the end in that verse? Wyomer. That's the wah, okay, on the front of it. And he said and kept on saying, Elohim, God. And then, uh, <clears throat> and one of the things that he said is, yihi. Say yihi. Yihi. This is... Uh, You become, you become, become light, become light. Now here we have Spirit God, and Spirit God is brooding over, suffering over, mourning over the faces of the deep and the muddy waters, the Hamahim. And then he says, let become light. Or, say or. Or is light. And Wahi, and he became light. Third person masculine singular, Cal. All right? <clears throat> Cal stem, while consecutive, per and became light and kept on becoming and shining light. Light. All right? Light. I have a question. Yes. When God was mourning over the face of the the earth is feminine. Yes. But here, and he said, let there be light. He's speaking to a masculine. Masculine. Yeah. Yeah, masculine. Why? Right. What kind of light is this? What kind of light is this? God's light. His light. Let become his light. That is sharp, girl. You get A plus for that one. And let become light. Let him become light. Okay? Let God's light shine. Let God's light brood over. Okay? One in verse four. Is this you getting something out of this now? Okay, one in verse four. Wayar. Elohim. Et Haor Ki Tov. Ya. Yav del Elohim Bain Haor Yuvain Ha Choshek. Now let's look in here again now. And Saul, and kept on seeing, third person masculine singular, Y Y Yar, okay? And saw and kept on seeing, third person masculine singular, while consecutive and perfect. And saw and kept on seeing Elohim. Okay? Who, what part of Elohim is doing this? Remember it tells us. Spirit Elohim. Spirit Elohim is suffering over the waters. Now, the earth she became formless and void. But the human race becomes formless and void when it when it grow, it, when it's born into the world and spirit God works on the souls of those men for ever as long as they live on the earth he just continues to work on them some receive spirit God and some reject spirit God don't they hmm. 
That's right. Some receive and some reject Spirit of God. And saw and kept on seeing Elohim, God. Now we have et. What is that? Sign of the direct object. Extension or limitation. A thought or verbal action. The idea of action. Saw ha or. Say ha or. That's the light. Okay. Saw the light. Ki tov. Ki because. Because good. Because tov means good. Because good. Why Yavdel? Why Yadel? And now let's look at this. Third person, masculine singular, well, cal, uh, hifel, well, consecutive, imperfect. Hifel. And he calls to be divided. He calls to keep on being divided. Elohim. Bayin, between. And this is a breathing space. Light. Haor, the light. The light. And UVN, and between. Breathing space. Ha Choshek. Ha the Choshek. Darkness, the thick darkness. Yes. I'm not. I was going to say darkness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thick dark. And what's the equivalent in Greek? Scotia. Scotia Sophon. Yes. <coughs> this is not daylight. This no. Is, this, is this isn't daylight yet. Yeah. This is not daylight. Yeah. I want you to remember this light is God's light. Who was the light before? Hillel. Lucifer. Lucifer was the light before. He was the light carrier before. This is before the sun has been created now. And calls to shine again. I don't know what the earth looked like. I don't know what the universe looked like when, when Satan destroyed it. Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14. I don't know what it looked like. But it was a mess. Wayikra. One and first. Five. Wayikra. Wayikra Elohim Li Li Or Yom We La Choshek We La Choshek Kara Layela Layela Wahi Erev Wahi, Wahi, Wahi. Voker. Voker, Yom, Ehad. All right, we know what that means, don't we? Wayikra, Wayikra. Third person masculine and singular, Cal. Third person masculine and singular, Cal, while consecutive and perfect. Tell me about this now. This is what? This word comes from Kara, which means to call. That's the root of it. Okay, <clears throat> page 894 in, in Brown Driver and Briggs. It's getting a little chilly in here, and it? that's because we I don't have getting you're warm. getting warm. Okay, because <laughs> you're on the hot light, see the hot seat. All right, and uh, he, we got we in there, why Yikra, and he called and kept on calling Elohim, Li Or, to the light, day, daytime, Yom Day. Now, this is a 24-hour day. There's no other word for day at all. Now, I had a guy write to me here a while back in a deal, and they said, you will find out that one of these days back there was at least 1,000 to 10,000 years long, one day. Is that what it says? Is it? Is that what it says? No, but, but the sun isn't created yet. So no, it, so but this, this is a day. It's God a day, is deciding what a day is. Mm -hmm. a solar day. No, no, it's not really a solar day. Okay. okay. This is a day, though. This is a yom. And the only period of time that a yom is is 24 hours as far as we know. Now, they may be, you know, we may ask the Lord one of these days, oh, that was 10,000 years. That was a million years day. Million year day. I don't think so. But that's what some people think, that these days before the sun was created, the solar years was created, were long periods of time. I don't think so, because yom is yom. Simple as that. But they do have a little bit in their corner for an argument, but I don't think so. Okay? 
We know the earth is old because it was created way right back there and the earth became formless and void. Something happened between the creation and what happened to the creation. Now we have what we have a reconstruction of a already finished product at one time. We're going to rebuild it. How many of you ever restored anything? Have you ever restored anything, Mike? I wish I could restore me like I've restored cars and stuff. It would be nice. I've restored radios. I've restored cars. I've restored watches. All kinds of stuff. Restored, huh? And we've restored houses. And houses. Yeah, I've restored lots of houses. Restoring something. That means something has already been built, but you're rebuilding, and that's what God is doing. He's rebuilding and setting new boundaries. That's what he's doing. <clears throat> and he kept on calling Elohim the light day. And uh, we la choshek, we la choshek, we la choshek, say that, we la choshek. Kara. Kara. And darkness, he has called, he has called. Third person, masculine and singular, cal perfect. The darkness he has called, he called the darkness, Laila, Laila. The name Laila comes from this, which means darkness. All right? It is Nikta, Nikta in Greek, Nikta, Nikta in Greek. Why he? All right. Why he? And became, third person, masculine, and singular, cal, wow, consecutive, perfect, and became and kept on becoming, evening, erev, why he? And became, third person, masculine, and singular, cal, morning, voker, yom, ihat, one day. One 24-hour day. This is this is a one day. Now, some people think that this was 10 million years or a thousand years or 10,000 years. One day with the Lord is what? Is a thousand years of the Lord. They use that term. But what is that figure of speech meaning in the New Testament? What does it actually mean? What does it mean? Pam, you know what it means? The time is irrelevant to God. One day doesn't mean it's like a thousand years to man. It's one day. It's nothing to God. A thousand years is nothing. How many thousands of years did God live in eternity? How many millions of thousands of years, myriads of thousands of years, did God live in eternity before he ever created anything? Must have happened. He always existed, didn't he? He always existed. So then how many millions and billions of years did he exist before he created the first thing? Barashis, Olam, eternities. We don't understand that because we only know time. We only know time. Let's go on one more verse now. Do you, are you enjoying going back and restudying what you've studied before and understanding? Are you understanding it better? Okay. Why Yomer? All right. Why he? Ra ka ah. Ra ka ah. I'm having to write this down as I go. Ba shuk. Ba shuk. Hamayim. Wayihi. Me ba da yaw. Bain. Mayim. Lamaim. I didn't have this written down at all. And he said, Elohim, let become for itself what makes the breathing space. What produces oxygen on the earth? What produces oxygen? What produces oxygen? Hydrogen. But what, what creation causes oxygen? Marilyn, what 
Oh, you mean like photosynthesis? What? Yeah. yeah. The plant life produces oxygen. The plant life produces oxygen. So the plant life are now, is now going to help produce oxygen. Okay? Because it's got light, it's got warm, and, and all of this all the time. So now we, we're going to speed up the photosynthesis and the transpiration, everything that, that plant life does, and it's going to create a lot of oxygen. We don't have plants yet. Well, they were there before. So it's they were there before because we're going to find out the seed that was in the earth is going to cause to sprout again now. So it had some of these things were already there. These some of this stuff was already there. This is in the old creation, and some of the old creation is going to live in the new creation in the re re restoration. Okay. Help you any understand it just a little bit better? Understand it better, Marilyn? <clears throat> All right. And he said, Elohim, let become a breathing expanse or space between or in the middle of or dividing the waters and became for itself, causing to divide between waters, le maim and waters. Yaas Elohim et ha ra kia Y Yavadel Bien Hamayim Asher Mithashat La ra kia Yuvain Hamayim, Asher, Mial, Lazarikia, Waihi, Chen. Waiyas. Third person, Master Singer, Cal, while consecutive and perfect. Comes from Asa. Third person masculine singular is what? He. He kept on creating or kept on making Elohim the sign of a breathing space. A sign of direct object. Elohim et, the sign of the direct object, uh, extension or limitation of thought or verbal action. He's, he's, he's working on the breathing space. He's working on the atmosphere. That's a, that's a Greek word, atmosphere. All right. He's working on the atmosphere. And he calls to divide, third person, master, senior, while consecutive, imperfect in the Hifel stem, between Ha, Maim, the waters, the waters, which, the waters, there is plural, from upon Mi, Ta, Tashath, between the waters, from upon the waters, to the breathing space, La Rakia, to the breathing space, and between Hamayim, the waters, which Mial, from upon, literally, from upon, Litharika, upon the, or to the, to the breathing space, and he became thus, or in this matter. Why he, third person, masculine, singular, while consecutive and perfect, and he became and kept on becoming thus, or in this manner. <clears throat> One in verse eight. Is this worth it, going back and looking at this stuff? <clears throat> Why Yikra, Elohim, Larakia, Shemaim. Why he? Erev, Waihi, Voker, Yom, Shani. All right. <clears throat> and now let's look at his word. Why Yikra? Third person masculine the singular, Cal, while consecutive and perfect. And he called and kept on calling Elohim 
He continued to call us. In other words, this was his permanent name. Permanent name. Uh, Lirakia. To the open, to the breathing space. He's beating out a breathing space, literally. He's beating out a breathing space in the Shemaim, and the Shemaim means what? Uplifted waters, now the earth. Let's look at the earth here. Now we have Eretz, and we have waters, and we have waters all over the faces of the earth. And he's going to make dry land, Eretz, and he's going to make water here, and in the uplifted waters, he's going to call Hashemaim or Shemaim, which means the water in the sky or the ocean in the sky. So that's what the, that, this is the uh, formation, the forming of what we, what Adam would see in his time. And he kept on calling Elohim the, the breathing space, the heavens. Up there are the heavens. And uh, third person masculine, and he became, third person masculine, saying, you know, this is the word, why ye he, why ye he. And he became, third person masculine, singing or cow walking, except safety had been perfect. And he became evening, a rev, and became morning, day, shini. What does the word shini mean? Shani. Shani. What does that mean, Brother Roger? It's like uh, feminine number two. It means to divide. Oh, okay. To divide. To divide. Yeah. It means to divide. It means to split. In other words, it means to take one and make it two. All right? That means to divide. All right? So now we have, now we have Pangea, our Godwana, on the earth. And we have Hamayim. We have the Hashemayim. We have the uplifted waters in the sky. We have uh, Pangea. Pangea means what? Pangea. All earth one, in one place and then all waters in another place. We don't have continents yet. We only have earth and we have water on the earth, on the Eretz. Okay? We have Godwana or we have Pangea. We have a curtain or veil of an ocean waters in the sky. This Hashemayim. We have the earth with water on one side and earth on the other side. That's where we are. 1 in verse 9. Let's look at this. I have to write this stuff down as I go. Wyomer. Elohim. Yik. Yikav. Yikavu. Hamayim. Methachath. Hashemayim. El. Makum. Ehad, Watarek, Watarae, Haya Basha, Haya Basha, Waihi, Ken. And he said and kept on saying, Wyomer. And he said and kept on saying, Elohim. Shall be collected. Nephael, third person masculine, singular, juicy. Juicy in meaning. Juicy means what? The waters will cling to themselves. The water clings to, them, to, to itself? Sure it does. Let the waters be gathered to cling to itself, the waters. From under the heavens. Mith cha cha tet. From under. Hashemayim, from under the heavens. This is the waters on the earth. Let the waters be in one place on, 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 underneath the skies on the earth. Let the oceans become, is what he said. Unto a standing place, Makom. Makom. A standing place. Ahad. One. One ocean. One ocean now. You Are you enjoying this, Brother Mike? Learn a little bit from it? Watirah. Watirae. This is third person singular feminine, Nephel. And let her become. Look at this now. This is the different word here, Sharon. Let her become, third person singular feminine, Nephel Juicy. Let her become for herself dry land. When you take the water away from the land, what happens? It dries up. For itself, it does it. You don't have to do anything to it. It's going to dry up. 
Okay. Ha Hayabasha. 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 The dry land. And then Waihi. And it became thus or upright or in this manner. The earth was, as Bray Lewis Guthrie said, the earth was wobbling at this time. It was all out of balance and wobbling. He said it was 23 degrees off kilter, and he begins to, he begins to balance the earth. How many, how many of you ever, ever bought any tires? And sometimes a tire, you put a tire on by yourself, and you're going down the road, and it's going, no, 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 just beating you to death. So you take it to the tire shop and said, would you balance that? Make it quit bouncing. And they go on there, and they find out where the heavy side of that tire is, and they put something over there. You know what God did? He balanced the earth. He balanced the earth. The earth was spinning. It's spinning. We might understand it, but the earth is spinning. It's so many miles per hour. It's spinning. And it was spinning out of balance. So God is going to balance the earth. He's going to balance with water and earth now. Okay? <clears throat> One in verse 10. Wayikra, Elohim, Laya Basha, Eretz, Yuli Mikveh, 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 Hamayim, Kara, Yamayim, Bayar, Elohim, Ki Tov. And he called and kept on calling Elohim to the dry land, to the dry land. Earth, Eretz. Earth means what? Dry land. All right. Yuli Mikveh. Yuli Mikveh. And to the collected, having collected, Cal, third person, masculine, singular, perfect, and had, or having collected the waters, having collected the waters, were the waters he called seas. See, Yamaim. Yamaim. Seas. All the waters clung together, and all the earth clung together. Okay, now the earth was sticking together, and the water. Before that, it was mud. The earth was mud before. So God congeals the mud, and he congeals the waters, and he begins to separate and clean them. And the ocean now, we know what the ocean does. What does the ocean do? It cleans the atmosphere of the earth. in its act. And so now we have... Ocean one and earth one. Ocean one and earth one. All right? Ocean were one and earth one. And saw and kept on seeing Elohim, Wayikra, Awayar, that is. He kept on seeing third person, masculine, and singular, wow, consecutive, and perfect. Elohim. That are because, that word um, good there means clean, upright. Honest. Good. Told. We'll do one more. You want to do one more? Is this pretty good? Going back and reviewing? We'll have to name this not Exodus, but Genesis. <laughs> creation. What should we call this class tonight? The it elements of creation. What? It was good. It was good. All right. It became good. <laughs> yeah, it became good. Wyomer. Elohim. Tadshi. Haaretz. Deshi, Esav, Mazira, Zera, Etz, Peri, Ose, Peri, Li, Menov, Asher, Zarov, Vo, Al, Havritz, Waihi, Ken. You following me along here a little bit? Wyomer. Third person singular masculine, and while consecutive and perfect. He said and kept on saying Elohim, calls to spring, let her calls to spring. Look at this. Let her calls to spring. What's he calling to spring? That which is already there. That which is there. Let her calls to spring. Third person singing and feminine, Hithel, juicy, let calls to spring for herself because there was seed there, wasn't there? Hmm? There was seed there. The earth, Haaretz. 
sprouts. Sprouts. All right, look at the deshi, that's sprouts, that's grass. The grass had seeds, it caused the seed to sprout. Herbs, SF herbs, grass, page 206. Seeding, seed. Seeding the seed. The tree, et, ets, that's ets tree, peri fruit. Making, mask in the singular, cow perfect. Making, make, or cow participle, that is making fruit according to his species. The species was there, wasn't it? Was it or was it not? What's, it, what's the Hebrew say? The Hebrew says there, let it do this. Okay? The species, according to his species, le me nov, according to his species, which, which is, that's a little particle of relation, asher, and then zara, seeds in it, seeds, vo, in it, all hearts upon the earth, and became thus. And became thus. Do you have any questions so far? 1 through 11, Genesis 1, 1 through the other. The creation of the heavens and the earth and that which is down under the heavens. A little bit so far. You like that? You want to go do this a little bit more next week? Or do you want to go back to, to Exodus? Or are you enjoying this? You like the creation? Do you want to do the book of Genesis, the first chapter again? <laughs> You want to do the first chapter of Genesis again. This time it will mean more to you than it was last time. And I, I saw that you were in part of my Genesis class, Brother Roger. The last part. The last part of it. The, the, you, unless you get this, you don't get the last part. That was the only problem. So we went from 1, Genesis 1, 1 to 11. Okay. So should we bring our Genesis books? Bring your Genesis books. Bring your Genesis book. Bring your, Gen your Hebrew Bible or something. This was a good birthday present to me today to, to get to, uh, to teach twice on my birthday. <clears throat> so the earth is sprouting forth from itself, the seeds and things. That was there. All right. Well, let's have a word of prayer and go out and do something eternal. Do you have any other questions before we go? Yes. Okay, the, the seeds were there. So when God was, before that, when God's creating the firmament, do you think there was some bacteria there which giving off the oxygen like you're saying? You know, Prob probable, something. but it won't do it without, if it's in a, if it's in a, a total darkness, it's not going to do anything, yeah, is that's it? Why you have so you have to have light again. Yeah. You have to have light. How many of you ever seen petrified wood and stuff? Yeah. That This may be where all that stuff came from. Who knows? They're in Fish Lake Valley up there in the north end of Fish Lake Valley. <laughs> to the west, back in there is what they call the sump, and it is a petrified forest of giant redwoods. You can go up there and you can just see where the trees were, the roots and the bottom of the trees and all of it is cracking and everything. There was a giant forest there at one time. A big forest. There a long, long time ago. There's sharks, fossils, there's all kinds of stuff in there. The earth just got whoosh, turned into a muddy mass, remember? And then God separated the mud particles from the water particles and he calls it to settle and to balance the earth. Okay? Does that make sense? Makes sense, doesn't it? Makes sense. All right. Let's have a word of prayer. Sharon, do you want to come up here and dismiss us in prayer? <clears throat> Father, we just really thank you for the opportunity to dis to rediscover for ourselves the your creation and the, the details of, of your creation how you balanced everything and created everything in your perfect order and and <clears throat> recreated renovated it once it was all messed up and again in your perfect order and i just praise you for your <laughs> for your plans for us and can we just have peace that, that you also have plans for us individually in our lives and things are in fact going in order and Lord I ask a special blessing on Dr. Jim for his birthday and that you'll just bless this next year for him in, in doing your work and Lord I just ask that you blessing on everyone here and everyone hearing this in Jesus name Amen, amen.
I've been wanting to go back and teach this first chapter to where people that could understand what I'm talking about. I think I've raised you up enough to do